Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm quite often asked, oh, what does Title 181001 mean? Well, even though you can get a list of these things, like from the University of Cornell, people don't know what it means. So what I've done is I've compiled hundreds of these titles, regulations, and how I have used it. Another example, did you know that the UN titles that they create is applicable to every member state of that country? So whatever the UN agrees upon is applicable to all other countries. Yes, they'll give you the idea that they are vetoing it, but no. If you're a member, you abide by the rules and regulations. What you are seeing on that palladium is just an act. That's like that statement that I've just made. That's like five, six years of research. Not only that, the US, this country as well, called the Fraud Act 2006, are very powerful tools to name on your documents. So, just like the US titles, the ones that I use, the ones that are most potent to yourselves, in whatever situation it is, as well as the UN titles, which are applicable to every member state, including uh, uh, UK, uh, United Kingdom. I nearly slipped up and said England, but it's United Kingdom. So I've also included on that the 2006 Fraud Act. Europe also has its own version of that, and I've deciphered that as well. It's quite a comprehensive list of what these rules and regulations, these titles mean, and the powerful way that you can use them for your own benefit. Like, for example, debt collection agencies, etc. Yeah. Now I'll share another secret with you. Are you aware all of these rules are being projected onto you, the average man and a woman, on the street? But that projection, just like the reversing of you being the debtor and they being the creditor, the government, that's a switching of the role. It's actually they that are the debtors and you are the creditors. So what does that mean? Those rules that I mentioned, those titles, like Title 18, 1001, applies to the people that are operating in that system the governmental officers, the judiciary. So, for example, that title can be used successfully, Title 18, 1001, on any senator, albeit what is known as the legislator, the judicial, and the executive. These rules are applicable to them, not you. They do not apply to you. They apply to the citizens of Washington, D.C. They apply to the federal officers, the sheriffs, etc. None of these things apply to you unless you are doing some sort of corporation trade or business trades or what they call a creature of the law. So, unless you have actually signed up to be a part of the legislator or the executive or the judicial, like sheriffs and etc., coroners and their administrative courts, these rules and regulations and these titles don't apply to you. They apply to the people that are supposed to be regulating this planet, the sheriff and so on and so forth. But what they done is that they successfully I've reversed the roles on you. They made you applicable to the rules that they are supposed to be subject to because it is those rules that keep them honest. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think you do. If you want to partake of this, it is by interview and it is for you and you alone. It's the same principle. I need a photo ID with the 
critical information blotted out, which would be like the serial numbers and etc. I need to see your face and of course your abode. And I need to see that on the interview, on that Zoom meeting. And your name will appear as a student of that module, as my student learning what titles and codes, regulations there are, and how to use them for your benefit in order to keep the so-called sheriffs, the legislator, the judiciary, at bay. It's quite horrible to think that they successfully turned the tables on you. And because they have successfully turned the tables, tables on you, they use those rule, rules against you. And this is one of the ways that they are coming for your children. Because under gender reassignment, the doctors will ask a four-year-old, do you think you should be a boy or a girl? And if the boy answers a girl, he will bypass the parents and give, give that child a sex change, mutilating that baby for the rest of its life and becoming totally dependent upon a vile system known as the pharmaceutical a mutilator, a thing that creates potions and witchcraft. That is actually what pharmaceutical is. It's a maker of potions and spells. It's quite incredible to say that, but that is what the definition is. That is not the only reason why I'm doing it. I'm also doing it as part of the wider knowledge that I have gathered. And the, for, for my university students, my Tricks and Traps university students, this is part of your module. And this will be happening on the first month of next year, January. For those people that want to be considered, you know, want to be considered for this, there is a fee involved. And let me just... Uh, have a look at it. It's 549. Okay, and it's and it will be in several modules. It's 549 Great British Pounds. And you have to be interviewed and approved by me. And you can't share it with anybody else. Because stupid people do stupid things and stupid people are considered to be extremely dangerous. They look stupid because they're stupid and therefore we assume that they're harmless. But they are not. They do an incredible amount of damage. Like, uh, if you go onto my website, there's a list of them. The one that I've met that is the most stupid is a character called Leon on there. Some of the uh, other ones are narcissists and psychopaths and etc. This is why I'll be interviewing you. This is why your name will be posted on my website. That's why I need to check that you are who you say you are. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not giving this type of information and knowledge away to anybody. You have to be approved by me. And just like with all the other modules, any misconduct will just simply get you struck out. Anything that you think you can do with it, like if you're a criminal or a drug dealer or whatever it is, worst case scenario is you think you can use it for your benefit to hide behind my knowledge. <laughs> I'll just simply write to the uh, courts and have that reversed. And I also give them instructions as to what to do with you. You see, this has been tried on me before, and I've actually posted it on my website. What is it that I'm saying without coming across as being threatening? These days, I try to do my fail saves as best as I can. And I always make it clear that any misconduct will instantly get, get you struck out with any of my modules. That's how powerful the teachings are. Okay? Uh, yes, there will be a fee for that interview, which you can deduct uh, from the whole uh, fee, as it were. 
Think about what I've just said. How comes they use rules and regulations against you when they're not applicable to you, but applicable to the other party? This is a very powerful tool that they use called mirroring. That mirroring is a technique that I will be revealing sometime next year in its most in-depth way. In-depth way. You began to learn about it as the champions in the task and force when that movie, Dr. Sleep, was analyzed. Next year, I'm going to take you into a deeper level than, than ever gone through with any student group. Yes, it's gone through with secret societies that perpetrate these things over you. But later on next year, I'll be teaching you the true effects and how the techniques are done in detail of mirroring. One of my best, best examples, or if not a movie, on mirroring is probably Portrait of Order in Grey by Oscar Wilde. I love the black and white movie. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a breathtaking example how these mirroring works. And these mirroring is so effective. They reversed all the laws and regulations that control the legislator, the executive, and the judicial onto you. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll speak to you folks later. Bye-bye now.